Hi there. I'd like to bring attention to Jasmine Warrior Princess. The page is all one word. I'd really like you to take a look at the page and help this little girl truly get the support she needs. She really is a warrior princess. Thank you very much. great. Gloria, you are someone special. Um, you know, for someone to be, you know, you spoke at the WBC office about how female boxing has come so far in the past 10 and 15 years. Um, and especially with the help of, you know, Tom and 360 as well, how much yeah. he's pushed that and it's actually really inspiring. Yes, it is. I, I think, um, as you mentioned, um, women's boxing a few Companies years have ago. top of the line apparel both in combat sports and comfort i can't wait to show you guys more of this and you can actually use the code dreamer for the special edition of mma journal canada issue number seven the dreamer edition that tom has given me the opportunity to uh to be part of the 360 car so i'm really grateful for that oh yeah and women's combat sports in general um you know honestly like there were there, some people you know they'll they'll say um the general public would rather watch a male fight than a female fight. But yes. that's so that's changing so much now. Um, you know, I think one of the, uh, in just combat sports in general, one of the greatest wars of all time that could be up there with Marvin Hagler can be uh, in the UFC. It was Zaley Wang against uh, Joanna Jacek. I don't know if you ever saw that fight. I, I didn't. Unfortunately, I didn't. I mostly just watch boxing, to be quite honest. <laughs> um, so definitely take but a I'll look check it out. at that fight. Well, and here's the thing, because that was a pure boxing match. Okay. And, um, Whaley Zhang was training. I know she was hanging out with Mike Tyson for a while. Oh, and, nice. Um, yeah, and Joanna in, uh, out of, I think it was Poland. Uh, so that European circuit, there are a lot of good names out there helping the hand speed and stuff. But uh, that... There was a picture going around and, and Joanna's head was so, so swollen and she had zero damage. It was crazy. Wow. I think one of the um, uh, MMA fights I've actually remember um, seeing is uh, Ronda Rousey with uh, Holly Holm. That one was iconic. I remember that one vividly. <laughs> I got shivers when he said that because, yeah, I forgot about that head kick. And, and yes. That that is definitely up there as well. Even with Leon Edwards, like how how fancy the the headshot dead was, Ronda Rousey did that. And uh, one of my favorite things to see is just the arms straight up. All you see is that mouth guard smile and just pure <laughs> happiness. And you know how that feeling is, you know. Yeah. So you have five knockouts on your record. No, no, no. Um, I I only have three fights. Um, oh, all of them have gone the, the distance. Oh, yes. wow. So that's on the professional record. I, was that three? Yes. I'm thinking you're amateur maybe for your 12 fights or 15. 15 um, fights, yeah. Was it? Uh, I had um, back in the days, Um, I did boxing from 8 to 15. I was, um, I did it consistent. Um, unfortunately, mm. back, unfortunately, back then the competition, it wasn't as active as it is now. Hmm. Um, I won all of my fights in the amateurs. I did have some, some stoppage. Um, I believe it was like maybe three or four, but it, okay. it's in the amateurs, not in the professionals. Not yet. <laughs> oh, it's coming though. The dynamite's coming. <laughs> it seems that your combos are, you know, regardless of the gender, your, your combos and your hand speed, you know, even just watching your, your training clips and videos and stuff. Um, I, you know, I honestly, I have to apologize right off the bat for the day. No no, the debut thing the other day there. Um, <laughs> no worries. Are you, are you originally from Guadalajara? Um, actually, uh, I was born and raised here in Boyle Heights in Los Angeles. No way. Yeah. Oh, my and my word. mom. So my mom is from Mexico, Puebla, and my dad is Central American from Guatemala, Retaleo. So I'm a little mixture of everything. That's awesome. So yeah, I had to. I had. To, I was reading something that said you were born in Guadalajara, so someone must have just been oh. writing some, <laughs> oh, just really? maybe writing some fan fiction for you. So maybe no, but yes, I was born and raised here in LA. Boyle Heights, that's amazing. Yeah. So Thank yeah, you. obviously the support you have, you know, boxing alongside Omar Shini Dad and his um, yes. cards with that, and he's putting on a show. I I I yes. told him I messaged him because I'm going to have him on as well. And, nice. Um, yeah, and when he did his pose. Yes, I iconic pose. I love that. <laughs> I actually know Omar from the amateurs. Um, we actually grew up together. Wow. Um, he's a few years younger than 
than I am. Um, and um, we both used to train at Foster De La Hoya Gym. So I know him since he was a kid. And um, we always had the same coach, Don Chui. Now um, he has the gym, Fundamentals 19. And um, yeah, so we always had the same coach. Um, you know, so just go in detail a little bit about like growing up in that scene in LA and being able to be a part of the Oscar De La Hoya Gym and and just your, your uh, coach as well, Don Chui. I'd love to hear more about all of that. So I actually grew up in the projects, in the Estrada Courts project. So it was, um, it's known for like, you know, it's gangs, all that, mm -hmm. you know, drugs. Um, but to be quite honest, when we lived there, we had a pretty decent experience. Mm -hmm. But it was because um, they knew my brother, my older brother, and my older sister, um, Adan and Nancy and I, we, uh, we joined boxing to like, you know, stay out of trouble. My dad um, put us in there. And um, growing up, no one really like... Um, I guess in a way, didn't really like mess with us because mm -hmm. they knew we were the, the boxers, the boxer family. So, <laughs> you know, we didn't have a horrible experience to be quite honest. Um, we just stayed in our lane, you know, we didn't look for trouble. We went mm -hmm. to the gym consistently. And um, from the projects, it was walking, it was like a walking distance. Um, so it was about, I would say like four to five blocks. So we will walk every day. We will go train with Don Chui. Um, my brother started with him and I had started with a, a different coach. Um, but then I noticed that my brother was progressing way more. And my coach was, I don't know, he might have been going a little bit easier easier on me because I was a girl. Mm -hmm. So then I switched myself to Don Chui. <laughs> I'm, no like, oh, I, I wanna, <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm going to go with this coach because I think, you know, he's better. <laughs> so then I switched myself to Don Chui. Um, he took me in and he pretty much treated me like, any regular boxer with the boys so I was probably um one of there was two girls it was me my sister actually three and some other girl that used to train at, at the at the gym so we were the only three girls but my coach um he always treated treated us the same as the boys like when they were running we were expected to run when they were doing um conditioning we would be doing that we, I was sparring with the boys um mm -hmm. it was great so I really loved that about my coach that he always treated me the same he didn't go easy on me he expected you know um, a good performance always so I'm really grateful for that and it pushed me throughout the amateurs to compete um as I mentioned um I had 15 fights I won them all and it was thanks to his hard work and well my hard work too so it was a teamwork that's awesome that's that's <laughs> really incredible and you know I think it's honestly disrespectful to coaching to not give, you know, people like yourself a full shot when you're in the gym. Like, look at that. Like, imagine if you didn't, you know, have the guts to go and say, hey, I want to do this. I'm sparring boys. I'm sparring boys older than me. I'm doing it. I got hit in the face and I'm not running away from the fight. You know, I want to be here. And, uh, oh, that's that's really incredible. Um, yeah, especially for how much of an inspiration you're, you're uh, like continuing to be for your community. And oh, obviously, thank you. I appreciate when that. You grow up, oh, you know, like this is this is why we're doing this, you know, is the fight is one of the most easily things to talk about. And it's so translatable, whether you speak English, whether you don't speak English, you see someone get hit and get knocked, um, knocked down and get back up. You see someone training hard in the gym, um, you know, whether you're, you know, just being lazy and don't want to clean the house, it inspires you to, to get up and do that. You know, if, if I'm thinking, you know, Gloria has got she's got to balance her work and home life. She's got to balance like a health life on top of that. Got to balance professional boxing at a, at the highest level as well. Not just, not just being an athlete, but I thought, cause this is the highest level when you're getting up here, especially on route to the green belt, which I'm sure is going to be wrapped around you one day. So hopefully if all goes well. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> you got to see, we're, you. we're speaking into it. Absolutely. It's going to happen. It's going to happen for sure. So I'm, I'm really excited. So you, you stay active, you stay ready. Hey. Yes. Um. Normally, um, we fight. We take a couple of days off, then we go back just to to maintain our condition. Um. And so we don't start from like you know square one. So we uh as soon as we go back, we begin running, training, and then um sparring gets brought into. So we eventually start sparring before um the actual fight. Nice. It's a whole routine. <laughs> yeah. No. And, and like um very tasking. Very. Um, like it requires a lot of the body and you always have to be fueling yourself. That's actually what I wanted, wanted to ask you next for um, vitamins or anything outside of the box that helps you stay mentally um, ready to do all these tasks. Cause you know, even if you're in good shape, some of these um, exercises, if you're doing, 
you know, lighter movements or mobility movements or even stretching is just a very mentally tasking thing. Yes. Um, for me, I, I take vitamins, just like the daily vitamins, like, you know, like you find at um, Target or something, just to make sure I'm taking my vitamins. And from here and there, not always, I I take um, Expedite, which is kind of like a pre-workout from snack. Mm -hmm. um, I take that um, and it pretty much just gives you a little bit of energy, but it's not like those typical pre-workouts where you feel like you're like you drank a lot of coffee. No, like this is just like short term. It gets you through the workout and that's it. So I really like that one. My eyes open because there's a lot of talent here. Not just in LA, but you know, you just see, you know, some fights in the amateur where you're just impressed by their their talent. They're, it's amazing. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And you want to like, as soon as you see that, you know, you want to get them to a custom auto. You want to get them to a Don Chewy right away. You want to get them to someone... <laughs> with that mind to help them um, as early as possible. You know, I was speaking with Kieran Kettle yesterday about, um, you know, the, the, the face of uh, Muay Thai. And you'll see in, in the UK, they really push the kids. And in, in Thailand and, uh, you know, especially in other places besides the States. And I know it's, it's getting more popular now with children. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. even prior, you know, let's say a 16-year-old a right now um, that was born in 2007. Well, in Thailand, that 16-year-old may have, you know, 60, 70 professional fights by now. Or, yeah, yeah, you know. Yes, I, I've, I've right. heard of that. And I even seen, like, you know, so with social media, you see, like, all these videos. And some of these um, kids, they're, wow, they're, their dedication is very impressive at such a young age. And like you mentioned, they have so many fights under their belt at such a young age. So that's pretty impressive as well. It is. The Thai boxing style, too, is just ruthless as well. And I really like to see the mix of, um, you know, um, orthodox boxing, like just regular boxing with the Thai boxing. I think it's a really deadly combination. It's just having a hold back and throwing an elbow when you're in, in, <laughs> yes, in the clinch. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. It's so like, I, yes, I, I watch a couple MMA fights here and there, but, um, yes, I'm just so with those kicks. Wow. Mm -hmm. They're, Absolutely they're so strong <laughs> i'm just like i i salute those people because it, it's pretty 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 wild yeah you know? some of them are saying it's like taking a baseball back to the arm when you block it it's like sometimes the kicks they hurt uh, a lot more than the punches obviously with with the gloves oh, okay. still hard but when you're getting shin onto the uh, forearm it's bone on bone contact and, yes i've uh, actually even seen videos where like you kick the opponent's leg and it breaks that's wild like I've, <laughs> like I've seen that in videos and I replay like five times at least because it's so wild just to see that live I'm just like wow and that's not just a person and some of these um fighters are just laying there like nothing happened like okay come get me it's <laughs> I don't know it just makes me startle like wow like I don't know if they're like in shock or they're just like oh it's just a regular day or something I don't know For June are you gonna be are we gonna see you in June um Yes, hopefully. Um, right now I'm currently taking like a small break just to let the body recover. Um, we had a pretty um busy camp. Um, so you know, with all that sparring, um, and all that training, we just want to make sure that the body's um relaxed and it could go back to work. Um, so we're I'm taking about a week off, but then I'll be back to start training. And um, if all goes well, yes, I'll be back June, hopefully. That's really impressive. I love active fighters, active boxers, active athletes that uh, just want to get back in there and aren't afraid of the fight as well and not even afraid but just they want to put on a show because that's that's what it's about and again in turn it's about the story right and how much it helps people um I'm yeah sure the sport has helped you know bring bring you up just how you uh with self-conscious and in anyone's um feelings as well i know even after a few months myself of hitting a bag you feel indestructible so to be able to go in you know to a ring get wins you know it must just you it must be over the moon Yes, it's a it's a great feeling. I um, it's almost it feels as good as when you graduate. <laughs> Pretty much when you graduate um and get uh I don't know your degree or something it feels yeah really good. It, yeah, it looks like that, especially with the smile. Yeah, yeah, that picture of you is it's really nice to see to see Thank just you. pure pure joy and happiness in you. Um, so yeah, you spoke even about just the health benefits of how demanding boxing is and how other exercise comparatively doesn't really give you the results that boxing does. 
I yes. Found, I found the exact same thing. Yes, um, because um, when I recently came back about almost two years ago, I had just, I returned just to lose weight because I've gained weight through the pandemic, especially. Mm -hmm. And but before that, I was um training like at, well, not training. I was just exercising like at Alley Fitness, Planet Fitness. Um, and um, I just felt like my body was not, um, I guess in a sense, like my body was used to like a certain type of training. So then I just messaged Jesus, Don Chui's son, and I told him, oh, you know, you guys have a gym. I want to go check it out. And that's where I began training again. And um, so I dropped weight quite fast because boxing is like a whole body workout and mm -hmm. it's intense. It's good. And then from right there, I began sparring and, um, you know, the rest is history. I, I <laughs> turned pro. <laughs> <laughs> it's now or never, like you say, right? Yeah, pretty much because uh, I'm 31. I am um, 31 right now. So it's like um, for at least there's like um, when you're in your 30s, that's like your prime time in boxing. But then you're in a way also aging now. So I'm like, it's now or never. I'm either going to just be thinking, what if, what if? Because I always wanted to come back to boxing. I always wanted to be a pro. But as I mentioned back in the days, there was no competition. Mm -hmm. There was not. Um, and the women's boxing wasn't as known as it is now, thanks to uh, all these amazing uh, women boxers. Absolutely. And even yes. girl boxers right now. You know, some of them are amazing. It's so young age too. So, um, so I kind of just had that in the back of in the back of my head. Once I return, I'm like, well, it's now or never. I'm either gonna do it now or I'm gonna think about it I don't know like 10 years from now oh what if I would have turned pro mm -hmm. so I'm like I don't want to I don't want to get to the point where I just think about the past and in a way regret like oh I should have done it like no I'm, I'm gonna do it now if if I become champion that'll be amazing if I don't like at least I give it a go but I'm not gonna be thinking what if because I think that's probably one of the the worst feelings in my opinion but yes that's why I said not it's now or never <laughs> I got chills. I got chills, Gloria. That's so exciting. It's so exciting <laughs> because these kinds of things only happen once in a lifetime. And yes. they don't happen too often for people as well, especially ones that are, are even boxing. You know, you have a lot of people that are, are excellent and aren't being recognized. Um, yes. I'm sure even you felt that as well in the past. I know you have excellent coaches, but just from the media perspective side of things or from, um, you know, how events get handled. But this last one, record-breaking numbers on UFC Fight Pass, um, it's such a good, such a good thing to see. And you just, just keep doing what you're doing. Keep, and just, okay. you know, one day, I swear, I promise, like with just looking at you, like you, that Sinise Estrada level is, is so close. I swear. It's so, so close. Yes. It's funny. Cause I actually know her from the amateurs. Um, <laughs> she, we grew up around the same area. Um, she used to train at the Hollenbach gym and I used to train at Doster de la Oye gym. We're around the same age. We were always around the same weight. So. I'll see her around and sometimes we'll spar, but that was a long time ago. So I'm so happy for her. Like she's, she's where she's at because she stayed consistent to be quite honest. Um, yeah. And all that hard work and dedication and she never gave up. She stayed in the game all these years. So she has a lot of experience. So there's a reason she's a champ because you know, all that hard work eventually paid off for her. So I'm really happy for her. And it, you know, she's an inspiration um, to everyone because she started from the bottom, now the um now she's all the way to the top. So that's that's amazing. That is incredible. Should do a, a little reunion for a little another sparring uh, session at this point. How <laughs> maybe that would be in the amazing. Future, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> maybe hey? in the future, who knows? Oh yeah, yeah. I know we'll I'm a little bit Tom. heavier than her right now, so who knows? We'll see. <laughs> hey, she's the champ, though. She can do it. She's got the belt, right? So then yes, that there's no excuses on that end. <laughs> yes, yes. I think I'm like um not by much. I'm not sure. I think she's like in 105 or 102, 103 yeah. around there. And I'm at 112. So, you know, there's some weight difference, but it's not like 30 pounds or something. Maybe uh, like 10-ish. So it's not horrible. <laughs> so I was really uh, happy to hear about how much the, the guys when you were younger pushed you as well. Not just the coaches, but the other boys. Um, your brother, Adan, uh, how you were yeah. watching him grow in boxing and how that inspired you as well. And... Um, you know, being asked about, oh, a girl in a, in a man's sport, et cetera, et cetera, with the training. And it, and as soon as I heard that you were asked that, I, I kind of figured that it would only be met by support because it takes cojones, as you know, to step in there. It truly does. It truly does. Yeah. Um, yes. Um, I know some um, 
some women boxers, even girl boxers here right now and in the past, they might have been discouraged by, um, you know, just comments like, why are you in a man's sport? And this is for guys or it's a guy sport or whatever. But luckily for me at, at my gym, everybody encouraged me, not just, um, well, especially my coach. Like I mentioned, he always um, pushed me. He didn't um, baby me. No, he pushed me to like get better. So I'm really grateful for Don Tree for always pushing me and not just taking care of me. No, like even when I was getting beat up in the sparring, you know, he'll tell me you have to do this and this to like, you know, um, move your head or throw throw this way to keep improving. And now uh, my my teammates, them too, they um they pretty much saw me as one of the boys, to be quite honest. <laughs> one of the boys. Um so they would give me little pointers. Um my brother, he would um uh my brother was pretty much the one that would uh if I was like not doing something correctly, um he'll correct me too because um he was very, very um very skilled. He had um he had a he had talent. <laughs> so uh-huh. he was he was a great boxer. Um so he helped me as well as Entry, my teammates, and um, just everyone in general. They they supported me. I never felt that um, you know, I didn't belong there. I actually felt that I belonged there, and I was encouraged because everybody always welcomed me with open arms. So I I'm really grateful for that too. That I I had a great experience growing up in the sport. That message definitely needs to be just spread a little bit more of how much support that um, girls and and women as well going into the sport will 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 get because I think that old mentality of it's a girl sport is such an 80s kind of 90s that older kind of style of thinking and um i know we're dissipating um that's that's going away so it's good yes. to see that and you get to be a part of being that inspiration it's it's really cool yes so just sit, want to say thank you again for doing this because i get to be a part of that as well by speaking with you so i really it's really no problem thank, thank you, you. Thank of course for you of course but I guess I could kind of see it like why um maybe some some other boxers, some other female boxers might have not got not might not gotten the support that I luckily um got. Uh, like I mentioned back in the days, like maybe even 10, 15 years ago, um, there was no girls, there was all pure boys. So maybe mm-hmm. that's why it was it might have been a little bit odd for some people to see like a girl in boxing but now like you said times have changed it's more welcoming so um that's amazing i'm really happy for the up-and-coming boxers that are getting nothing but support that's that's great good for them and um i'm really happy to hear that they're um they're getting the support they deserve because boxing it's it takes guts man it takes guts it's not an easy sport like when you go compete it's pretty much your corner and you and your opponent and their Mm -hmm. corner but Mm -hmm. once you're the bell rings it's you and your opponent pretty much so it's a, it's a demanding sport, but it's a beautiful sport, nonetheless. It is. It's yeah, it is the most beautiful sport because there's no um, it's nice because there's no in, in team sports. They are very difficult. And sometimes some tasks do end up uh, landing on one person. So let's say the quarterback or, or a kicker or a goalie, et cetera. But most of the time uh, for most of the play in the minutes of the sport, it's a team, a team thing, building a team. You'll have, you know, maybe half a dozen guys even on the bench that feel like they won when when the team wins right and so when you know that you've put in every not even only every second of your training camp but all your decisions in your life growing up staying consistent doing your amateurs coming back to boxing um back to it being you know a team sport with the coach as soon as that cold bell rings yeah it's just just you and your opponent and um it's such a beautiful chess match and it's so you can't cheat that, you know, every millisecond, every eye twitch, everything is, is red in there. Um, I got to spar, well, not spar. I got to just move a little bit around with, uh, Petch Panarong. He's one of the glory kickboxing champions uh, a couple weeks ago. Oh, wow. And I've never been able to be face to face with another professional striker ever. I've never even seen a boxing match in, in real life. So I went up to him and, uh, he speaks Thai, but I threw the double jab at him and he got excited. He doesn't speak English, but he said, oh, and so right away we started moving and um, I did a little bit of bobbing, a little bit of weaving. Everything I did, he read three, four moves in like, as I went this way to go back this way, he was already hitting that way. Like just the, I know once you're in there enough, the reads, um, the like, by the millisecond and to go forward 
um, is something that you get and it's like another language. Yes, uh, it's the, all, all that, uh, all that training, all that um, experience, you pretty much the reflex, like, I think you're going to throw this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to counter it. So it's all that experience that, um, you know, piles, piles up and stuff. But yes, I, I get what you're saying. <laughs> because some, some people like, um, like in boxing, like when I watch boxing and stuff, I'm just so impressed with their head movement. It's like, how do you know he's going to do that? And they're already like doing something else. So it's, 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 it's wild, but it's, it's very impressive. Not the last. It is. It is. Yeah. Obviously Canelo, um, one of the best yeah. head movers in the game. Um, yeah. It's just like an art to watch that. So. Yes. And so it's Floyd Mayweather, another masterpiece. Wow. His yeah. wow. Defense. Yeah. Amazing. I, I was speaking with Kieran again and, and Tom was saying that it's, it's just hard some boxing promotions, they kind of tarnished um, competition to keep perfect records to try and keep up with Floyd's record. And, and you mm -hmm. know, it's, um, it's good to see that the folks in, in the promotion that you're working with, they're putting together true bouts, true fights. Yes. I actually love that about 360 uh, in Tom Lofner's, uh, well, Tom Lofner's promotion, because um, I just feel like the competition is it's not, I've, I always bring this up whenever people ask me about like, oh, where should they go see fights? Or even when I'm selling my tickets, like I always, I always make sure that I mention that this is a great promotion because the fights are not just one-sided, that it's someone with a lot of experience versus someone that has like none. This mm -hmm. one is like, I would say it's a pretty equal, equal match, um, all the fights. So I love that. Um, before, um, before I, um, I got the opportunity to be under the 360 cards. Um, I, I was actually going as an audience to go cheer on my, my teammate, Omar Trinita. Mm -hmm. I was part of the audience and I noticed that right away, like, oh, the competition's pretty, it's not, it's pretty equal. It's not one-sided. So I, I love that. Um, and even if I was in like, you know, being part of them, but thankfully I, I've been getting me an opportunity. I'll still keep going. The, the, the card is amazing in general. So I think they're doing a great job. And I feel that that's one of the main reasons why they're, they're growing pretty fast because mm -hmm. people love to see um, uh, actual fights that are, are, you know, equal in a way, equal, not just one sided. Like, you know, that the other you're going to hit, but the other person's going to, you know, counter and stuff. So it's I really like that. Me too. It adds it adds the element of a of of surprise and a true fight to it because before it it um, when you would watch boxing and I won't name any other promotions but you know um, <laughs> but I know what you mean, yeah yes. and it kind of just added this like huh really like I'll go and check and eight to one odds ten to one odds twelve to one odds are you serious like this <laughs> this is a, a disrespect to all the greats that have ever stepped in there and, and train hard and even it's a disrespect to the opponent that is skilled more he's training at the highest level um he's at that high level and you're giving him and um just lesser opponents lesser skilled opponents but it, even though it's still you know people will say tin cans or something like that i don't think i don't think anyone in the sport should be using terms like that honestly not in a not in a woke matter um just in a in a it's it's a very just disrespectful disrespectful honestly to to any fighter that steps in the ring because like you said before it takes it takes so much to step in there and keep going. Um, a workout already is tough. Getting beat up and punched in the face every time you go work out is 10 times harder. So, <laughs> And also, like, um, as, as uh, you know, as fighters, the more skilled your opponent is, the more experienced, the better you're going to get because you're pushing you. So that there's that, too. So mm. I really like that. Um, though, even during sparring, if, um, say that, you get a, a sparring partner that, you know, it's better than you. you. You know, when someone's better, there's nothing wrong with that. Someone's mm -hmm. always going to be better. Someone's always going to be, you know, a little bit less skilled than you. But that, that doesn't matter because as long as you guys are helping each other um, and develop more skills, that that's good. Like sometimes in sparring, you know, there's there's days um there's there's days when, you know, I get beat up and that's normal. Like I'm mm -hmm. like, OK, well, I know they're doing this. I'm going to try to make sure I don't get caught with that the next round or the next point. But and then there's days when I do amazing. So it's all about experience and always um, making sure that there's sportsmanship, especially during sparring. It's just sparring. You're there to help each other. And, but in fights too, like, you know, um, I feel like um, sometimes, you know, some, some people take it a little bit too personal, you know, sometimes there's personal issues. Sometimes it's just, you know, it's just, it's just part of the sports, part of the, 
boxing just you know if you win amazing if you don't there may there's next time you know there's absolutely that you feel better yourself to win next time but I don't know that's how I I see it it's, I just think it's, it's a beautiful sport and we should like you know maintain it um like that absolutely and going back to how the win is like a graduation once you finally uh, kind of beat that uh, next step in like, let's say you're sparring someone and they keep hitting you with the cross somewhere or they keep getting you with the hook and you finally, you know, as opposed to holding up, you just go back or you hold, you know, um, I think it was uh, Lennox Lewis who's talking about, you know, holding his guard um, front here and just being able to switch like that. So he can, he can push the jab away and then still uh, quickly come close to block. And um, so like once you, you kind of up, update moves like that and you start realizing that it's like passing classes and once you pass all those classes you get to graduate with the win oh i love that yes i never <laughs> thought about it like that but it's true that's just true like the more um i guess the more um techniques more methods you bring into into it the, the better the better um skilled fighter you are so yes i totally agree with that it's like passing classes you're moving into the next one absolutely absolutely and and for the losses thing too Isaac Doolittle, um, if anyone wa watches, he had one of the greatest looks on on uh, losses. He was undefeated in bare knuckle. Um, and his oh, wow. first loss, uh, it was it was three or four and oh, I believe, which is still impressive, you know, to go into bare knuckle boxing. And um took his first loss against Mike Richmond, and he was he was pretty beat up. It was it was it's you get you know how bloody those things get. He was from the bottom of his heart. He wanted to thank Richmond. He wanted to thank the Marine. Uh, and he said, you know, it's better sooner than later. I get to know this lesson now. And he spoke on, there should be no negativity involved with a loss. You should be thanking it. And again, I love to translate it all to life. And this works so well in life. You know, whether you have a, a fall or a scrape or whatever, someone, uh, you know, you have a, a bad relationship with someone, that's good. It happened then. It happened now. And you can move on and learn from that later. So it's, it's yes. easily translatable yes i totally agree how you like you can learn from a loss it's, it doesn't always have to be negative you don't have to stay there you learn from it and you move forward absolutely that. yeah and the one thing we spoke on too is um like going into fights with an o and o mentality um where you kind of always feel fresh and he also brought up um maybe thinking about going in with an zero and one mentality where you're even a little bit hungrier as opposed to thinking about just keeping your record and so uh i know max holloway going into his last fight he lost three times to the same opponent but he's coming back trying to get a belt run and uh again he's going in with an zero and zero. so you know all the chatter is just kind of silenced because you know it's like oh it's my first fight <laughs> i like that <laughs> ended up being indita i hear oh, the last indita. Card. oh that's indita. it <laughs> yes it's so it, it sounds similar very similar but it's invicta which means uh, that i have not lost yet oh uh, yes nice. yes invicta, okay. i have not lost yet but i don't worry i've gotten like why were they calling you that and i'm like no they said this but very similar oh, so it was a miss here okay yeah uh -huh. i think i think you said yeah it translates to to little indian <laughs> <laughs> I, and it's and, funny because um my my one of my one of the um Jesus one of the the guys in the corner told me why did you put that and I'm like oh I didn't I didn't give a, a nickname um you know they just kind of like threw it in there and then I'm like but they they said Invicta and they're like oh I was laughing because I'm like you chose that name and I'm like no uh, they just said that but yeah <laughs> little Indian well <laughs> I'll go with it you know whatever <laughs> but um yeah it's funny because it, you're like the fifth person who asked me that I'm like oh. No, they actually said this, but yeah, it's yeah, funny. So yes. I really appreciate this, and I'd love Thank to you. come, uh, uh, or I'd love to talk to you again, maybe before or, or after your next fight. And Sounds if you're fighting yes. in June, I'll see you down there because I'm gonna come down. Uh, oh, nice! And I actually fight. want to go to Canada. Like I've been wanting to go there. Um, I just want to go check out. Like, um, I want to check it out. It looks so beautiful, but I will want to go during spring over there. Where yeah. would you recommend? Um, so springtime. So if you um hmm, for like the best Canadian experience, you're gonna want to go to Banff in Alberta. It is like a little slice of heaven. It's a little dream world, honestly. It's it's uh, the main main strip, and there's a massive mountain, and the moon is usually over it. They got a ton of restaurants, um, and it's close to Calgary. 
um, and Edmonton, which are kind of larger cities. Edmonton has West Edmonton Mall, which is one of the biggest North, uh, malls in North America. So there's lots of stuff to do there. Um, but before I go, I just wanted to um, quickly give a shout out to my my gym, oh, Fundamental of Nine Things. Of Fundamental Nine Things. Thank you guys. I love you guys. Um, my coach Don Chui. Um, he is the best coach in the game. Um, Jesus, his son, our manager. He's he's amazing. He's another coach to us. Um, Decom, we love you. <laughs> we we love you so much. Yeah, Decom and um and my teammates Omar, Chema. Um, Ob and um, thank you, Arnold Senior, for helping me in the corner. And to my brother Adan Mugia, thank you for helping me in the corner. Um, my last, my last two fights, I, I love you guys all. And um, uh, yeah, thank you guys. Oh, and 360 Promotion, Tom Lafner, and all my sponsors. You guys are amazing. Thank you. <laughs>